Representative Carter, we know you're going to be very involved in the budget process for the Appropriations Committee. What funding priorities uh, will our, our area maybe see through the budget process? Anything specific to the local institutions like VSU or Wiregrass? Or well, um, I'm blessed to be Secretary of Appropriations, which is an officer position. It puts me on all seven of the subcommittees and it makes me ex officio of ways and means which Ellis just spoke about. So I have a pretty tight grip on what's going on with the funding. The teacher in me decides to bring props to everything I, I talk, everywhere I go to speak. And I wanted to just explain to you very briefly how this whole process works. And the way that it starts is, I would say back several months ago, each of our higher ed institutions from TCSG to USG, they came up with capital project, uh, projects, I should say, capital projects that they wanted to fund or for the state to help fund in some ways. And what happens is the governor, he comes up with a revenue estimate, how much his experts think that the state of Georgia will bring in. It's usually fairly conservative, but he takes all of those requests from the education agencies to uh, Department of Community Health, every one of those agencies that is involved in state government, Department of Education, all those, and he comes up with what he considers, or his consider his recommendations for what how the budget should look. We will receive these new books the first week of session, and the Appropriations Committee will go through them and work it out and figure out what we're going to fund for the year. Now, again, I said there's a revenue estimate and the governor will keep the budget under that or at least balance it so we're not owing anything except for the debt on let's say like the vsu health science building which is a bond but the beauty um the beauty of what happened with us it, it wasn't even beauty it was a miracle what happened to us what three years ago or four years ago now when it was four years i guess when we got the building done was that um, the revenue estimate, the book came out, and VSU was not on the list. Now what happens is, let's say Dr. McKinney and Dr. Anderson back there, they, they ask their, uh, the commissioner or else the chancellor to put their projects on the list, and the chancellor and the commissioner will prioritize those projects. So VSU, I, I don't remember where the health science building was on the list, the governor's office will go through and pick which ones they feel are the most significant and, and priority, prioritize those. And we were left off that year. And it was $32 million. Well, again, we're balanced. So it, for it not to come out in the governor's recommendation and us to get it on the list by March of that year was pretty, it was a miracle. It really was. So um, as far as though what we're coming up with this year, I know that Dr. Anderson has a big, huge project in the Allied Health Building of, for Wiregrass, and I'm not real sure where it is on the list of the commissioner. I do know, though, that the technical college system has asked for $72 million for world-class labs, and that will go towards every technical college in the state. So we'll get some of that funding, but we're certainly going to try to get that Allied Health Building, too. Um, and then VSU, 3.5, I think, is the request for a renovation of Pound Hall. And um, that, those are usually a little easier to fund, but we do have to pass it around a little bit sometimes and let some of the other schools get a little chunk. But we're certainly going to work our, our magic to see if we can make another <coughs> miracle happen for, for the entire community. And those are the ones that I know of, unless I've missed anything, and y'all may point those out for me. Representative 